So today we start a new series on the book of Genesis. Uh, last uh, month in January, we were looking through the book of Colossians. And so uh, we also just concluded our prayer and fasting week. So I hope that if you didn't participate during this week, you will still get a copy of the prayer and fasting book. It's one week worth of devotion using the UECP method. So you can get to know that and you appoint a time that you will do prayer and fasting. The purpose of this is not for us to have one week to pray and fast, but it's to jumpstart our prayer life. Okay, because sometimes we just miss out on the importance of prayer. So if you look at that book, there is a specific area of prayer corresponding to the letter of the day. So, kunyari, Sunday, pray for S. Meron siyang nakasulat doon. Your spiritual revival. On Monday, you pray for this and so forth. Letter M yun. No? So, you can look at that and jumpstart praying because especially in times like these, when we face challenges of many kinds, we have a God who hears our prayer. Can we begin with a word of prayer as we start the series on Genesis today? Lord, we pray for your word to speak to us and to challenge us to know who our God is. Because if we know who you are, then we know also where we stand. And Lord, we help us, oh God, to really grow in our faith. Remove our fears, worries, and hopelessness. Instead, put in there joy, hope, love in your peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, maybe in the news yesterday, you saw the big fire in Pandakan area. Okay, the San Miguel uh, warehouse, plastics warehouse, burned down and even, you know, burned a part of the, uh, the skyway. No? Tama, no? And so, Pandakan Skyway, it was a severe fire and everyone, again, was panicking because we are already panicking a lot the past months, right? There is crisis all over the world today. There is crisis that we face together around the world. There are wars, there are uh, riots, right? And then we had the volcano exploding. We have the coronavirus spreading in different parts of the world. There is mass panic, especially because there are a lot of fake news going around. So aside from mass panic, this fake news is causing mass hate. Okay, the victims of the virus are now being blamed for it. Kawawa yung mga tao sa Wuhan who are losing their family because people are looking at them as people who has caused it, but they're also suffering in the midst of it. Now, in the middle also of this mass panic, we also see opportunists, right? When the actual happened, I live in Bang Bang area, so I can see that outside, no, the, uh, those selling face masks, you know, there are a long queue of people waiting outside to buy a box, and then until the sign we're out of stock is posted. Okay, and then it happens again when we heard that the Wuhan, uh, there is a confirmed case of NCOV in the Philippines. And so, it's an opportunity for people to double, triple, or quadruple the price of these things. So sad to say. Now, we do not need these calamities to heighten our stress levels because I think many of you already feel stressed in your life every day. You know, the affairs of your family, business or work or school already stress you out. And add to that, if your business is going down, if your family is breaking apart, if your health is failing, if you struggle in your career and education because it does not give its promise of a better life, or you look at the political scene, the peace and order situation, or the people you live with, you cannot bear them. There are just so many stressors. Add to that the situation around the world, and so we 
lose our sense of peace. Now, where do people turn to when they face crises of many kinds? So, of course, some people, they would remain in denial. Okay? They will ignore what's happening, look away, and hope it just disappears. Some people naman, they will wallow in their misery, right? They will uh, self-medicate with their distractions, with their TV series, with their computer games, with their hanging out or drinking. And many people will question if God is really a good God if there's so much suffering and difficulties around the world. Well, you and I hold the hope of eternal life. You and I are people who are in Christ. So how do we really put our hope in God and share to others the hope we have? So we will look at the beginning of the Bible and hopefully it will inspire or help us to know God, to trust God and place all our hopes in Him. The Hebrew word, for Genesis is Bereshit, which means in the beginning. And truly, Genesis is a book about beginnings. Now, in it, we see the beginning of the heaven and the earth. In it, we be be begin, we see the beginning of humankind. In it was the beginning of marriage and family. In Genesis, it's also the beginning of sin and death. Okay, it also talks about the beginning of nations, of languages, and of course, the beginning of the people of Israel. The book divides cleanly into two divisions, chapter 1 to 11. It says about the beginning of the human race, and it is a story of failure upon failure upon failure of the human race to please God. So they get worse and worse and worse, despite the acts of God, like the flood or the, ano, the confusion with the language, human race, the sin escalates. And so in chapter 12 onwards, the story begins where God has another plan for the fallen creation by choosing these four men, the four fathers of Israel. You know who? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Joseph. They were the four people who were narrated in the chapters 12 to 50. Right? So the story starts over with them, and God unconditionally promises that through them there will come redemption. So it is important also for us to note that Genesis is a part of the first five books of the Bible, called the Pentateuch, which in simple translation means the five books. That's it. The five books written by Moses, and what is the five books for? Put yourself in the shoe of a Hebrew slave. You have left the land of Egypt. You're en route to the promised land. You have never heard about this God, and you have no idea what has happened to you and why you are in that state. Okay, you were miraculously uh, freed from slavery and you're going to this land you have never seen in your life. And there's no word of the Bible written yet. Okay, so very confused, ignorant, and don't know what to do. So they would have questions like, who is God? What is God like? Where did we come from? How did things go so wrong for us and for the world we live in, right? How about these tribes all around us? Who are they? Why are they there? How do we relate to them? Or the religions of the Egyptians and the other nations? What's so different, right? Why did God allow us to be enslaved in Egypt for 400 years? And finally, what is our role in all of this? Who is God? How do I relate to God? You know, if, if you put your mind in the uh, shoes of a person like that, you will understand why Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible to introduce 
to them, God, right? To understand their roots, to know where they came from, and what they are supposed to do. So we can find answers from the pages of Genesis to make sense of the present from the stories of the past so that we can have hope for the future, right? Whether you're a Hebrew slave then or a Christian under fire today, it is the same. Knowing where we came from and wh why we are here helps us to make sense again of the past and the present and have a hope for the future because we know it's all in God's perfect plan. Okay, so we go to the first chapter of Genesis. How it starts in the beginning. Okay, no other previous record given about God. First time God was introduced on pen and ink, right? He was revealed for the very first time, so they are knowing God with a clean slate. Now imagine you were introduced to a person you've never met before. You don't know where they came from, who they are. You have no idea, okay? So you are introduced for the very, very first time. And so they will know who is this God from the story of creation. So you and I also must understand who is this God we run to, we pray to, okay? Who is this God we ask for help from? And who is this God we call out to? So that we can turn to this God, the Lord creation, okay? The awesome God, the Lord of all creation. Okay, so my message focuses on five different areas and I'd like you to consider them and think about them and how they relate to you. First, when you have disease containment, who do we call? The Center for Disease Control. In Philippines, is San Lazaro Hospital. So do, please don't go there at this season. <laughs> okay? When there's volcanic activity in the Philippines, we go to the Philbox. Okay, typhoon, pag-asa. But when we ask about the purpose of our existence, when we ask about the deep issues of life, who do we run to? Of course, we have to run to the author of life, the author of creation, the one who started it all. And so, Genesis introduces this God. Okay, sorry, ah, nahuhuli ako sa PowerPoint. Okay? That this is the God who creates everything with perfection out of nothing. Again, let's read out loud. He, God, creates everything with perfection out of nothing. Again, He creates everything with perfection out of nothing. For a while, picture a person who is painting on an empty canvas. There is nothing there, right? But guess what? Can you imagine that there's no paint, no paintbrush, and no canvas. God had nothing, right? And that is what it looks like for God to create everything that you have around you out of nothing. You cannot e e even say God created things out of thin air because probably there was no air yet, okay? You and I, when we want to create something, for example, imagine a cartoon character. You will always have a basis on something. You will put eyes on it. Who told you that there are eyes? You will put their nose so that they can breathe. Who told you they need no noses to breathe? We always create something out of what we know, but seldom we can create something out of nothing. That is God. So let's read what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In Together, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And the darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let's look at that, no? Observe the word. 
it was without form. Okay, there's nothing. There's no shapes. It was void or empty. These two words are very important to understand the sequence of creation, which we will go back to later. Now, heaven and earth here is not the spiritual realm and the physical realm. It's simply what is above the earth and below the earth. Okay, that's simple. God created everything above and below. He made everything. And so God's canvas here was darkness. And His Spirit was hovering over the waters. And it's a very nice picture of what we call transcendence and immanence. What is transcendence? That God transcends creation. He's outside creation, separate from creation because He cannot stain by the sin and corruption of all creation. And yet He is there hovering over the waters. He's involved. He is immanent. He is with creation. He'll guiding creation to take its form. And so, the same with us. He's separate from us, from our sin, but He's also with us, guiding us into holiness. Right? So these two are attributes of God that we often talk about but do not understand. And in the same way, you and I can turn to this God of creation who created everything out of nothing but with perfection. Later on, we will see that every creative God, act of God, he will say, it was good. But it means it was perfect. Perfectly the way God wanted it to be. Okay, And when he creates man, he will say, it is very good because it's the final stroke. He has completed all that he wanted to create according to his heart's delight. So, brothers and sisters, when things seem impossible for you and me, when we run out of hope in the midst of crisis, we have to understand that the same God who made everything has the power over all things. He is the God of the impossible. He can turn things around when we think it is impossible. If he can create the universe out of nothing, what he cannot turn around for us? Failing marriages, failing businesses, failing health, God can turn those things around, but only according to what he deems best. He does not stop every disease. He does not cure every illness. He does not take away every problem, but he can because he is God. He is all-powerful. And we plead to him to take it away. And yet, we submit to his perfect will. Right? Because we know that he knows what is best for us. He is still in perfect control. That's probably why in Philippians 1 verse 6, he says, pray all types of prayers, but the final result is the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart's and minds in Christ Jesus. Meaning, okay, we believe that God is still in control. That we can rely and hang on to His promises and trust in Him. You know, when I was a child, this was one of my struggles. I doubted that God could ever help my family. We were financially hard up. There's always quarreling about money. We are becoming emotionally distant against one another, and I'd rather stay home in school or church so that I don't need to go home and face the hate inside the house. Okay, that was a terrible time of growing up for me. But, you know, when God found me and turned my life around, I started to ask God to heal my family, and it did turn around. Not perfect, not without struggles, not without concerns, but God did turn around because it was God's will to save everyone in my home. So God took care of us in miraculous ways. And he is really deserving of all hope. You know, God can stop the Ta'al from erupting. God can eradicate the Wuhan coronavirus. God can do that. God can do what man cannot do. He can change the hardened heart of a person, even yours. 
but will we trust and depend on this God that he is in control and he knows how he wants things to be? Can we trust in his perfect plan? Right? Brothers and sisters, can we trust and depend on the God who created everything out of nothing to change the impossible situation you are in? And so it should bring you to pray, to seek God, and to seek to know his will, and to seek after his peace. Because we know God is there for us. Not only that, the scripture says that God gave form to the structures of the universe. And so, God responds to the true problems he saw when his spirit was hovering over the waters. Ano yung unang problem? The earth was without form. So, first three days, he created the three forms. And then, another problem was it was void or empty. So, the last three days of creation, he filled up all creation. So, we will look at that in detail. First is the formless part. You know, building cracks doesn't mean that the building will collapse because it's not the cement that holds the building together, right? It is the metal inside the building that keep, keeps it standing upright and you have no way of seeing what is inside. Okay, hopefully, they are good, solid okay, metal bars that hold the building together. So, when there's crack in the building, most likely, your building engineer will simply patch up the cracks, repaint it, and then it's gone. And you will be afraid because why he just put cement on the cracks? Because it's not the cement that holds the building together, but the internal structure that holds it together. And so if it is compromised, probably it needs to be torn down and rebuilt again. Now in verse 3 to 13, we see here God gave form to the structures that hold the universe together. Okay? There are so many amazing things that uh, we learn from science. For example, the gravitational pull of the planets. Isn't that an amazing thing? The planet's core the engine that makes it turn around day and night, okay? The atmosphere so that we can breathe air that is breathable. Imagine if you don't have gravity and there's no atmosphere, you'll flung off to space and you will just freeze to death in a matter of seconds. Or how about the solar system, how all the planets create a balance and so many other things that are so wonderful about God's creation, but, you know, the Genesis chapter 1 reminds us that God made these structures that hold these wonderful things together. Okay? He created at least three structures there. And we will read together out loud. Read with me. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Okay? God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Right? And then, verse 6, And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made an expanse and separate the waters that were, and under the expanse from the waters, that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let dry land appear, and it was so. So God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called the seas, and God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plant yielding seeds, fruit trees bearing fruit with is their seeds, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. 
and the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kinds, trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Yes, God gave form to the structures that hold the universe together. Right? What are these three forms? Now, God creates these structures not by putting things together. When you're creating some structure, you will get some things and put them together. God creates these structures by separating things and pulling them apart. That's how strange it is when we read this creation story. For example, right? Um, he separates light and darkness so that there will be day and night. And then the clock starts ticking. We have signs and seasons, days and years. Life can now begin. There was evening and there was morning. And then he puts an expanse to separate the waters from above and the waters from below. And the atmosphere was formed. And so life is now possible below the earth, but there is no place to set foot. And so on the third day, he formed dry ground by pulling the seas to one place. And then he also made vegetation that multiplies itself edible fruit to grow upon the earth. So now there is land to set your foot on and there is food to eat. That is how wonderful it is that God gave form to the structure that holds the universe together. And so because God is the one who created all these things, it is only an act of God that can destroy what he has put in place. No human can destroy what God has put together. It reminds us that we are safe and secure in the loving arms of God because where, if he holds the universe in place and he says, you are in the palm of my hand, then you know what kind of protection he can give to you. Okay? He is the one who holds everything in place for you and me. Okay? The Bible also calls Jesus our rock, our solid foundation. It also says that nothing can snatch us out of the hand of God, the love of God. He also promised he will never leave or forsake us. So when our words around us seem to collapse and dissipate, we can run to God that holds the universe in place and makes it the way it is. We can hold to his promises because his word will stand. In our day, suicide and depression is becoming commonplace because people tend to lose hope. But you know, people I met who had these suicide and depression issues, as I serve God, you know, there are people who succeeded ending their life, but there are also people who overcome and live to this day. Now, the scars that they had were difficult and deep, but God pulled through and healed their heart. You know, for those who survived and are with us right now, at least those I know personally and have spoken to, they say that they have found hope in God when they can never found hope in anything. Not in their family, not in themselves, not in anything. He filled these forms also, according to the scripture, with an extensive variety of heavenly bodies and creatures. Okay, that is because it was empty. So God extravagantly placed all that you see in the world. So the next three days, God fills this structure with an extensive variety of heavenly bodies across the sky that will blow your mind apart. Okay? And then he, because he was working on the empty part, and it's, he didn't just want to put something there. He just was to put out his creative power and make 
everything so spectacular and wonderful for us to behold. The books written today to explore them cannot even contain the parts of the heavens that are still being discovered to this date. Okay, they're still looking out and looking what is out there nonstop. Okay, even the species of animals on the earth, we're still discovering new ones again and again that we have not seen before. There are just so many. Now, scientists try to explain this phenomenon how that there was a massive ball of gas and it exploded. And there was just an orderly universe that came out of a random act of explosion that nobody did. Okay? It just simply violates the laws of the universe. It's nonsense. They use something more absurd than the creation story to reject God and the Bible. Right? An explosion creates life. And not only life, but this kind of a universe that we have. Yes, God created from the smallest microbe and its species to the largest animal like the blue whale and its species that is the size of 10 buses. That is who our God is. He is, wow, awesome, wonderful, amazing. Let's read verse 14 onwards. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be the lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to do the day, the sun, the lesser light to rule the night, the moon, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate light and darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. <coughs> and God said in verse 20, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the water swarms according to its kind, every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters and the seas, let birds multiply on the earth, and there was evening, and there was morning in the fifth day. Verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground, okay, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. Here he fills the sky with the birds and the seas with fish. There were so many that they were swarms of living creatures. Swarms. Both big and small, according to its various species, God created them all. And no book can hold the information to completely explain each of these. More species are being discovered day after day. Hindi ko lang alam ba't pati tao may bagong species. Nagkakaroon ng dagdag na gender, hindi po kasama yan. God created them according to their kinds. Okay? And God saw that it was really, really good. Yes, God made them all. And you know what Jesus said? God clothes the lilies of the field and provides for them better 
than the clothes or robes that Solomon wore. God provides for the birds of the air with food, and they neither to toil or spin. He provides for them all. In other words, God provides for all that he created. And he says, why are you worried what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, O oh, you of little faith? O oh, you of little faith. And because we worry about ourselves, we run after the things of the world, we run after money, we run after fame, we run after fortune, we run after power. You know, you and I, we run for the perks in life the enjoyments, and the blessings of life. And we tend to forget the primary purpose God has assigned to us. Right? So I remember when God called me to serve him many years ago, I told God, yes, Lord, I will serve you, but, meron akong but, and what was my but? I want to achieve all my dreams in life first then I will serve you. I want to earn my first million first, then I will serve you. I want to do this, achieve this, do that, then I will serve you. And then God reveals to me, this is not my plan for you. So if you want to invite me to do business, that's not me. See, it was clear to me way before God said, you will not be a businessman because you have to focus serving me. That's in my case. Okay, so God is very clear cut to me no? that I will not do it because he has called me to do some other things. Not to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, do what he's called me to do, and then he will just provide for all I needed. That is not easy, right? It takes us to trust such a God right so that we can focus on serving him and not run after the things of the world that he provides for all creation fourth surrender your worries doubts and fears to the one who faithfully cares for you and provides for all that is created fourth he creates man and woman in his image and gives him dominion over the earth Right? So God created man in his own image. He created male and female in his image. What does that mean? Imagine for a while that we personify God. We make him understandable by making him seem like human. God can see. God can speak. God can feel. God gets angry. God punishes. God loves. Like he is like us. But actually wait the Bible says, no, we are like, created to be like God. Baliktad. Okay, we are what we are because we are created in the image of God. Of course, in his perfection. Okay, but marred by sin. And that is amazing because it means that God has a purpose for us. And it says here that he blessed them and ask them to fill the earth, to subdue it, and have dominion over the earth. So God gives mankind his first mission. Fill the earth and rule over it. Now, rulership is not lording over it or exploiting, right? But taking care of all God has created. So we use the term stewardship. Okay, dominion is not ownership for us. We do not own the earth. <coughs> Only the creator owns everything. But we are given stewardship of all creation. Okay, so, but we are not doing a very good job. Finally, so it reminds us because we are created in God's image and given dominion over the earth, we are to be good stewards of God's creation and live out the very purpose of why he created us. And finally, it says here that he prepares and provides for the every need of all that he created. So it's the first time 
we hear God talk to man about their compensation package for being the ruler of all creation. God gives mankind every plant yielding seed <clears throat> and its fruit for food. And for every beast, he also gave everything, every green plant for food. Yes, God prepared for everything and provides for everything. All compensation paid. You do not work, need to worry. You just work for Him. Yun yung binigay niya kay Adam na compensation package. Okay? Yet, you and I are often worried about many things in our life. Right? We worry about our future, our career, our savings, <clears throat> future family, husband. We are plagued and stressed because we run after the things of the world rather than God. Right? That is the problem that we have. So today, brothers and sisters, as a conclusion, let me remind you, this is your God. He created all things out of nothing. He formed every structure of the universe that holds it in its place. He filled the earth with all that you see in the skies, with all that you can see and behold. Right? He created you and I in his, in his image. And most important is he planned in advance to provide, he prepared to meet our every need. Yes, we can trust and turn to God in our crisis because he is such an awesome God. And this must lead you to at least have faith in this God. Be assured that he will take care of all you need. Lean on him, hold on to him, and trust in him. It must lead you also to worship him. Yes? To adore him, to revere him, to live according to his purpose by surrendering your life to him. And most important finally is for us to serve this God. So with the kind of life you live today, I will know who your God is. When out of your mouth comes all your worries and fears all the time, instead of who your God is, then we know who is God to you. Okay, when you run after idols of the world rather than really giving your all to God, then I know who what or who you worship, right? Because who you worship reflects in your life. May God help us in the midst of the many crises we face to really honor this great and awesome God. Let's close in a word of prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for revealing to us through the words of your book who you are. Strengthen us so that our passion and devotion is to you and you alone. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in the midst of the many things that are happening around us that we will continue to hold on to you and to hang on in faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.